So today I'm just going to go through the build of a really simple quadcopter. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, one of the friends down the model boat club he was looking to make a quad and I gave him the plans to make this one. And uh, I thought this was uh, quite simple to make. You just make as many arms as you want, make the hub and put the arms on the hub, that's it. You know. Um, but he looked at the plans and he said uh, um, I don't know how I'm going to cut the bits out. It actually turns out this guy um, doesn't have a fret saw. He only has basically a handheld jigsaw and a plane and he's been making some really nice model boats with just those tools. So this uh, build is basically aimed at people who don't have lots of tools in their workshop. Um, the arms are basically just bits of wood and the central hub is just basically two squares of quarter inch ply. So I'm going to get started now um, and we'll see how it goes. So these are the bits of wood I have used for the uh, arms. Um, as you can see it's 12 mil times 32 mil and they're 250 mil long or that's half inch by inch and quarter and 10 inch long. Um, nothing fancy there, obviously there's just four of them. Try and choose the best bits without any knots but you're going to struggle with pine. And then you've got the central hub which uh, is quarter inch ply and uh, what I've done here is the first thing I've done is draw one of these diagonal lines and then before I draw the other one just check it square and make sure it's perfectly at right angles. And once you've got those two drawn I've then drawn a circle at a radius of 56 mil and then I've just marked out where these four holes are going to be drilled. Uh, once I've done that I've then clamped the two bits together onto the bench and drilled four holes. You can see I've got two drills in there at the moment just keeping the two bits together. Um, so that's the first bit. The next bit was then to draw a line down the centre here which is going to help us. Uh, I've decided right at the start that uh, for convenience we're going to allow the arms to fold in for carrying. So once you've drilled the holes in the plywood the next bit is to drill the holes in the arms. Um, mark out a centre line depending on the width of your ply you might find it slightly different from the uh, quoted 32mm and then do another line going across at 38mm and drill holes in those. At the moment I think I'm drilling those about 2mm they'll be enlarged at some stage but this is just to mock it up. So you can see I've uh, positioned all the bits together they're loosely held with the 2mm uh, drills in each of the holes um, and the next bit I want to look at is this bit here and this is going to hold the arms in the correct location when they're in the uh, operating position. Um, I've made this very accurate, make sure it's exactly 90 degrees and that will position there. And the reason I did that line down the center is because you want the point of this triangle to be on the line. And if it's on the line, you should find when these are extended, they'll be perfectly aligned. So I'm going to make two of those bits, but before I stick any one down, I'm going to make sure all the dimensions are correct around the perimeter. So I'm now ready to glue this piece in position onto the uh, plywood. Uh, but before I glue it, I'm just going to check, have a final check that the uh, angle is correct. So this is 90 degrees. And then if you've got one of these, you should be able to run that along the edge and that should uh, confirm that this is 45 degrees to the edge. Uh, if you're happy with the alignment um, I've actually clamped mine in position and another thing that I've done before I glue this in place I've actually put sellotape on both the arms here to stop the arms sticking to the ply or this piece sticking to the arms. So I'm now going to glue that in position and I've put two little nails in just so I can tack it down and hold it while the glue dries. Right, so I've got those two little bits um, glued down and they're nailed in position to hold them in place. I've checked everything square and I'm happy. Um, what I didn't explain is why these um, bits have the corners cut off. Um, and that's obviously because when uh, you want to fold the arms in, they're going to go back that way. And if you don't cut the uh, corners off you won't be able to turn them in. So I'm now going to let those dry and work out what the next stage is. So while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the uh, central plywood 
Uh, I'm just going to mount the motors onto the arms and uh, this is the motor I'm using, it's the A2212 13 turn 1000 kV um, comes as a kit with the Hobby Power 30 amp electronic speed controller um, and a 10 inch propeller, you get a left and a right propeller with each kit and uh, these are really cheap, they work out about 7 or 8 pounds, you'll have to work that out in dollars but it's uh, one of the cheapest sets you can get um, and I found they work really well so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this adapter on each of the motors and then mount the motors at the ends of the arms. I'm just going to pilot drill them and use self tappers. So you can see I've finished mounting the motors to the arms. Uh, just a word of warning that uh, if you choose a different width of wood you're going to struggle because uh, the screws are quite near to the edge. Um, if you're worried that the wood is going to split when you screw these in then you could drill all the way through with an M uh, 3mm drill and then you could use M3 uh, screws and nuts. Uh, I've got a way of using self tappers but I have pilot drilled every single hole 2mm. So I've mounted all the motors and the little bits of plywood underneath this quarter inch here that align everything have now dried. So uh, I'm now ready to start assembling it. Uh, I was a bit unsure at the time as to how I was going to clamp the top to the bottom and I've decided to use these captive screws here. Uh, I think these are M5 captive screws and I've obviously pulled that into the top and there's then a Allen head bolt on the underside. Um, so now I've got everything clamped together I now need to take out these drill bits and drill the holes properly to mount the arms. Uh, I think I'm going to use kind of this style of screw uh, and I think these are M6 so I'm going to drill through those and then mount the arms. So all the motors are mounted and as you can see I've uh, mounted all the speed controllers. I've just used a tie wrap and a little bit of foam tape underneath. So the next stage is to solder all these wires together and all I'm going to do is uh, alternate the way I solder them as I go around and then work out which way is the front at the end. So just to explain this a bit more, I've done the first two motors um, and for those who don't know how to reverse the direction um, of a brushless motor, you can see on this one they follow in sequence. So I've got the black, yellow and red all in sequence as they were set. Now this one I've swapped two of them around. So I've got black, red, yellow. You can see these two are crossed here. That means that this one will go in a different direction to the other one. So I've done all the motor connectors and now it's time to do the battery connectors. So uh, you can see on this one I've added another red wire which will join the two packs and then join to the battery. And the reason I've done that is uh, these two red wires I really wanted to join together but it was a bit too close or a bit too tight. So I figured that by using this other wire I can put the other bit of wire there and then heat shrink over it and hopefully that will make a decent joint. So I'm going to do those now and then we'll be ready for the uh, control board. Okay so you can see I've got all the uh, power cables done, all the motors are done so next thing I like to do is just check the uh, direction each motor is going. So I've got a little servo tester here and I've connected an opposite pair so they should both go in the same direction. So the next thing will be I'll connect a battery and just confirm they're both going in the same direction and just make a note on the arm as to whether they're clockwise or anti. So this is a little demonstration of what can happen. I'm going to connect the battery and you'll hear something's not right. So that continuous pulse means it's uh, receiving a pulse from the servo tester that is outside the range of the uh, speed controllers. So the easy way around that just temporarily is to uh, recalibrate the speed controller by putting the servo tester to max, connect the battery 
It'll then go into setup. That means it's accepted the high value. Go down to zero. And that's it set up for the range of the servo tester. Now I can check they go in the right direction. These should go clockwise. And they do. So all we've done is calibrated the speed controller to the servo tester. We're going to have to do it again later for the calibration of the speed controllers to the receiver and the flight control board. Okay, so I'm happy with all the motor layouts. Um, they alternate as they go around, which is correct. So the next stage is to uh, mount the KK board, but before we mount it, we need to uh, confirm which way to mount it, whether it's going to go that way or that way. So to do that, I've connected one of the speed controllers into output number one, and it has to be channel one, because uh, that's the one that uh, supplies the KK board with uh, five volts. Um, and then what we're going to do is connect the battery. This is the KK board which has a little remote uh, programmer. You could obviously just use the standard KK board. Um, so we'll power that up. And as you can hear it's uh, beeping because that's outside the range. So the first thing I'm going to do is just press menu. And then it'll shut up. So I'm now going to choose the motor layout, so I've uh, gone down in the menu to load motor layout, press enter and then go down until you see quadcopter and you've got a choice of plus mode or X. Uh, I'm going to go for X and enter. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, once you do that it will show you the layout and it says that the one on the front left should go clockwise. So we'll call that one number one and then two carrying on around and the board will have to be mounted with the arrow that way. So I'll just put an arrow for the front. So now I can uh, screw this down. I think I'll probably use foam tape. It helps with vibration and then uh, we can get all the wires connected. So the final bit of the build is just to uh, mount the battery or find a way of securing the battery. So you can see I've used this velcro strap and I've just uh, sandwiched the velcro strap underneath this bit of quarter inch ply. That's 60mm uh, long and 10mm wide and they're just screwed down to hold the velcro nicely in place. Obviously make sure it fits your uh, favourite battery and adjust as necessary. Okay so this is the model complete. of set up all the flight controller and I've uh, made sure the um, speed controllers were actually uh, set for a range on the throttle channel of the receiver. I've made sure that the uh, transmitter is giving out exactly the right pulses as on the receiver test that you can do on this and uh, now it's time to uh, try it in the garden.
Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm quite pleased with the way that handles. I think a few of the parameters need adjusting because it's uh, not very good on the control when I make aggressive manoeuvres. Uh, but otherwise it's okay.